everyone and welcome back to Piano Secrets. In this video I will be teaching you how to play Fire Elise by Beethoven. The scale that we're gonna use is A minor. So if you take these three notes we could start taking a look at the melody. We put the A minor up here and if we play the melody we will see this. And we already can see that the A minor chord is outlined within it. Now, you might say, what about those? This D sharp is a passing tone, then B and D is part of G major, and then resolve into an A minor. So we have this. Okay, and if you want to measure, you could do three pulses. So we have the one that matches the beat is a little bit more emphasized, even though it should not be noticed. Okay, now because A minor, first chord of the scale, is here, we could also distribute these notes on the bass. So we have A here, we'll play A here. We have A, E here, we'll play E, and then we add E. And that's the foundation for the left hand. So we do this together. So we have a whole measure of A minor. Now, from there, this chord also could be inverted. So let's say if we have the A minor here, we could do these notes. Okay, so we have this now. Notice A minor chord there, and this will help you memorize it and cut the time. Now, we have to change chords. So enough of the A minor, we did two measures already, so we did this. Now here we're going to change. Now if we have A minor, if we go through all the chords on the A minor scale, we'll have B diminished, C augmented, the third chord, D minor, and then we could get to the fifth chord, E major, fifth chord. That's the one we're going to use here, because when we did this, notice that we have E, 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 G sharp, G sharp. So this whole pattern here comes from the fifth chord. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And we'll match it with the B. Then you have the... E major again. And then we go back from a C to A minor. And we did a 1, 5, 1 progression. Okay? It sounds very smooth because it's almost like doing this. It will be the same thing here. So if we play this whole section, we'll have this now. To A minor, inversion, E major, chord, and back to A minor. If you have problem with the matching, it's very simple, it just match the last note. So that's why this is a very good song for beginners. Now we have an octave and it starts over. Notice that the only pattern that changes is here, what we added. And the A minor is outlined again. So what we're doing is 1, 5, 1. 
the whole time. Let me explain a little bit how you're gonna match it. So you have right hand matches this one, matches B, E major, C, A minor, and then we go back and do the same thing with the variation here. Okay? This section repeats two times. So after you do that, you go back to this and start it over. Okay? I hope this is clear to you. Just think on the A minor scale. That's why the G sharp is there. And the chord. One, five, one. Second part. Now, this second part is going to change and it's going to use one more chord and it's based on the C major scale, a little bit of it. So C major is like this. And that's why the right hand gives you this melody. So let's do that a little bit. So when you do this, the interval is C and E, and that gives you the foundation for the harmony on the left hand. That's why C and E, we have C, E, G, and what we place on the left hand is the C, the G, and C, outlined in C major. Notice that the E here is missing, but it's on the right hand. And we're using the first chord. Okay. Now when we do here, we stop using the first chord and we're gonna go D minor, E minor, F, G. It's like a G7 outline here. And that means if we have a G on the melody, we could also put a G pattern on the left hand. So if G is like this, that sounds too mighty, so he released the B, add the G, release the D, and do this with a flip over it. So if we do it together, the G major. Now he is gonna go back to A minor. Here, what you have to remember harmonically is that we use the C major scale and that we use the C major chord. We don't use the D minor, we don't use E minor, we don't use F, but we do use G and also A minor. Diminish and C. Notice that this pattern is dropping each time, one time. One note down. You get into a B. I take this with the thumb, go back and forth with the same hand. And you should be aware of the rotation a little bit. Rotate, rotate back, rotate, rotate, and get to the E. Now let's play it up to that point and then we continue repeats again. So It's important that you know that each time when we go higher, let's say for instance here, you could 
increase the volume. Increase. Increase, decrease, increase, and then decrease here. Increase. Decrease on the last note. Pianissimo. Same thing. Okay, now the next part is going to involve the C major scale a little bit, but uh, it could be thought this way. Let's say we have C major chord. If we add a B flat to it, we will have what we call a C7. And what he did for the first chord is add this C here, add this B flat here, and release the middle of it. So we have so we have a C7 chord that is inverted. Then we're gonna go to F major with both hands. Remember C major scale, we'll have C major, that chord F major. We're going from the first chord to the fourth chord. But it's flipped. So C7. F major and then C7 again reinforced by with these two G's but is the original chord just added that okay it's because the C7 results very nicely to an F okay now we have this and he wrote a crescendo if you have trouble with this you could split the hands and then we go to F more quickly will be like this and then we're gonna change the scales again so let's uh, take for instance now the left hand we have these chords F major and what we do in that measure is move that around that's it next we'll have a B flat major and we move that around the same way third chord we have something different here we have like a combination of an F with a C7 here but the C is missing so and we have this then back to F and we stay on F so, if you want to play it together, we have F major, B flat major, C7 over F, tension, F, release, and release. By itself now. that several times until you get used to it that's all there is now the only thing that if you want to analyze a little bit where the those notes coming from you could take a look at this part so F major is like this so it has one flat and notice that the first chord we are playing with it now we have second chord G minor we are not playing that one then we have A minor, so that's why it's related to the other one. B flat major, fourth chord, we use that in here. Then we have C major, we already used it. D minor, we use it. E diminish, and F. So that's why we could go from here to here and back. That's what we do the inversion here
Now let's take a look a little bit at the melody. So the melody starts with an arpeggio and just for to know the melody well just remember the scale. same notes but the B flat is there B flat and A and then piano now some people like to add the ornament it's up to you or you could play like this now let's do each section. Arpeggio. Notice the a little bit accent on the F, accent on the second E, and release. That's very important. Same thing on the B flat. All the way down the scale, accent a little bit. You don't have to emphasize like I did, a little bit less than you will tell you. Ornament now. Chromatic scale. Notice that it's just playing around with the scale. All the same scale. Chromatic. Always remember to add one little section at a time, so that means if you do this, just learn that. After you learn it, you go to this. That's it. Do it several times, come back. Now, now what we'll do is try to add this together. So the first thing I, I recommend is just play the melody with a chord. Okay, there it's going to change. I haven't discuss that. So on the first note, when you do this, two, three. Now if you did that, now you have to work on the matching. And we're gonna work a little bit by measure. So let's say if I add this with the left hand. Left hand by itself, together, by itself, left hand, right hand, and together. Okay? Alright, next one now. Every other note. Together, left, right, and together. One last time this one. Together. Together. Left, right, and then together. Each one together. This is easier. Every other note. Now here we have together by itself together. Now let's play the whole passage now, I won't say anything, just play it, slowly, F major, B flat, back to F major, then we're going to 
to change a little bit there. A little bit faster now and I take it from the chords. So there is one little part there that we're missing and you can see that from F now we're going to A minor. So we're going here. And from that A, those notes we're going to D minor. We have an octave and F. And then we jump to C major. I'm going to play just the notes so you can see. This is A minor. D minor. C major to G7. Back to C major. So I'll remember that A minor, we have it here, it just flipped. And remember that also D minor is the fourth chord. It's right here. It's flipped also. Sometimes some of the notes are missing, but still the chord, even if you have two notes, it still could suggest that is that harmony. C major, we have this. So the left hand, we just flip the G below, and we get rid of the C. C is going to be on the right hand, so that would be a C major. G7 for tension, remember the G, it's right here. And sometimes you say, why is it? Well, it comes from here, but if you take the two notes out, we get this an interval to create tension. So left hand. Okay, remember that we did the chromatic scale. Now we have Now if we do it together we could do the same. I prefer to do it like that at the beginning, so it's easier. So let's do it with chords, the whole thing, and then we split it. through all of the passage slowly and doing the matching so this you could play the, this chord you could play it together with F or you could come on late and match the C or match the F together left right together 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 left right together each one Together, 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 and together. Right. Together, left, right, and C. It's possible that you might lose the rhythm, that's okay. You're trying to place the notes where they should go. Okay, here I should really end it soft. And then it goes back. Now let's talk about the next passage. And in your mind, let's start with the uh, right hand. But the only thing there is, is this melody. 
And then you could see that it's the C major scale. But the only thing that he started once you land on this, you have to think. And then what he does is just adding a top a G. Then you could see the melody. Fingers for this. One, one, two, one, two, and one. Last time. So if you have problems with this, you could practice with rhythms. You could do slow, quickly to the next one. Do the opposite. And then do four. Okay? Or slowly. Make sure you are relaxed. Now here's using the inversion, C, inversion, scale, C major, a little leap and back. So if you think on the chord and the first inversion, scale, leap and back to the same. the last turn so both parts are the same but instead of starting over on C we go to an E now and we play around that so if we play it all from C we have this starts over. Now the thing is you have to rotate from one to another rotate over C scale don't do anything rotate over G and it starts over those movements are important rotate rotate again and then rotation so make sure you rotate on the right direction, so that means for this interval we go this way, down, get to D, we rotate back, and then back. Sometimes if your fingers might get stuck if you don't do it right, okay? I hope this is clear to you, let's go to the left hand. Now left hand has a G7, G7 chord, remember from the scale. D minor, E minor, F major, G. So if you just take the F and the G, and that's this. That tells you G7. Then he's going to a C major, G7 with a D added, and C. So I have this. Then we go to F, G, and C again. Repetition now, repeat. And then here, instead of going back to C, he pulls you there and he goes to an E major. That's where you have the G sharp and B. Now let's play it together and see it slowly. Matches here, matches the C, C major, G7, and C. F major, notice the A is part of it. To G major, back to C. Same chords, G7 to C, to D, and to C. To F major, and then E major with a turn. Rotate on the bigger interval. that here you count five beats so five E's so when you get here is one two 
three, one, two, three, and one. Okay, let's try it a little bit faster, see what happens. Let me repeat the whole passage. Also, approach a D minor chord by doing what we call a diminished chord and a diminished chord that's that kind of bends the notes so what he's doing is grabbing a C sharp diminish flip it and it does this and resolves so you hear this D minor so that's what you have Notice the D minor here, flipped. When you have a chord of four notes, you should emphasize the top note. Okay, so let's do it. Notice here, another diminished chord. So he does diminish, melody, diminish again, resolving to A minor. That's why it should be lighter. So, so the whole section, all the sections we used before, he uses the A minor scale, the C major scale, the F major, all those chords. But now at the end now, he's more drama, so more diminished. Resolving. Let's do it slowly together. Together. Okay, now the left is going to change and we have to add a D, which is D minor. It's also it's contained on the C major and also on the A minor scale. That's why they are related. So here, D minor. We raise this to a D sharp. We raise to E. E major and A. One last time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that I counted six so you can see exactly where it changes, but you could count three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and A. Melody line now, we have the D minor flipped. So those are the notes. Then we have E and C for C major. B and D, G major, and again back to diminish. So together will be first one matches, 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 and changes. Back to A. Okay, we have another melody there. I didn't mention it. We have C and A. Remember, we have double notes. You should bring a little bit extra the top note C A. To C, to E major, and then back to A minor. All together, if we start from this. Okay, I'm gonna play one last time that section very slowly and then I'll do it uh, 
together fast as all. play a little bit quicker let's say if we are coming from here when we did now we use we substitute that by a minor chord and then a B major chord so let's do it from here so the same repetition now here we got rid of the G sharp we change now Remember the B flat major from the uh, scale. So we have the B flat below. D flat major. Let's check it out there. So when we do this, now. B flat major, okay, and the B flat continues to three B. Jumps, and that's the part where we have the scale. Now, let's play up to that point. But it's true that when I said E flat major, now it's switching. for this so E flat to B flat to C minor to B flat so it's important when you do this you hold the note, you lift, and prepare the next one. So see, I drop, I lift, and because I'm holding still, I generate a legato like that. I wait until the last second, and then here lift, and allows me to play the next one. It creates like, the illusion that I'm playing the connected. Emphasize the first chord, and then. So, okay, and this applies for all the chords we played. Same here. Re lift and apply from the top. We repeat tension. And then we'll have the arpeggio. I think what I do is uh, play it all together. Together. Together, together, and together. Sing, release. Tension, diminish chord. gonna fool us to B flat major
So it's important that you do the last one, you count. One, two, three. One, two, three, and eight. You do measure the rest there. So always important to keep a body relaxed. Some students ask me, why don't you do it by changing the finger? You can do it, but for me it's very comfortable to just do one. As long as you have a loose wrist and you move like this, almost like if you're playing basketball, it's not a problem. Now, if you play basketball like this, you're moving the whole arm, that's not good. So it's just the wrist movement. Okay, now let's try to play this section. the arpeggio there and they are all triplets so we'll have to do let's do this one two three one two three so that's one arpeggio so it has one direction which is this the rotation here helps you and get to the E It's important that when you get to the third finger, you rotate this way and then back. And when you have this, you have a moving back from it to the thumb. Then repeat. The chromatic scale is the same thing. So, two considerations. The movement from the arpeggio to do the rotation here and replace the hand, get into E, and use the rotation to come back to A. Then it repeats itself, that's the same movement, here. And then we have a chromatic scale, and again, triplets. If you play it uh, slowly, counting, you will see the difference. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. But then here it changes. You go to the other speed. So if you were coming like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's where it changes. If you do it a little bit faster, when you play it faster, it's true that you could think at the beginning this one as a short note to get you to A without emphasizing it. If we add the left hand, we have A. And that's all there is. minor again and let's do it together first note together with D and A D again so it's important that we you get here it's only one turn, it's not, it's only that. And back to the same. Now we go back.
have a tea here. I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed it, take a look around at the other videos I made. Thank you very much.